Hey everybody, Buddy Cosplay here. Plasti Dip is a staple for many cosplayers. We use it to seal our foam projects and props when we don't want to use Mod Podge. It's a great material. It's got some downsides to it, some issues with fumes and toxicity and how bad it'll stay in your clothes. But as a product itself, it is very good for the purpose that we use it for. But it's not always so easy to just point and spray. There's some, some tips that you can use to help you get a better finished product when you're using this. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video today. Plasti Dip Tips. Let's get started. Right on cue. Time to go. There really is a trick to using Plasti Dip and today we're going to look at it in a little bit better angle here. We're going to look at how to use it to get the best results. The first thing you want to do is make sure you read all the instructions and warnings because this stuff is pretty dangerous. You want not, it's not going to explode, but it is pretty hazardous to your lungs. So always work in a well ventilated area or wear a respirator. And trust me, you don't want to be in your basement using this stuff because it'll stink up your whole house anyway. So always use it outside. And in addition to that, wear a respirator. And also shake it. Don't just say, well, that's good. Shake it for the full duration it recommends on the back. If it says two minutes, shake it for two minutes. Color's not really an issue. I've got this neon green, it's a muscle car series. Just happened to be on sale and uh, $5.99 a can, I believe. Maybe it was, yeah, it was two for 12. Uh, and the second thing you wanna do after you shake it is to submerge it in hot water. Not boiling hot, just something that is uh, warm. I've got this pitcher, got warm water. I'm just gonna leave it sitting here for about five minutes. And this is going to warm up the material inside of it, at which point I'm gonna shake it again and resubmerge it for another couple minutes, just to make sure everything's good and warm. The warmer this stuff is, the better it'll spray. So if you shake it well and you warm it up first, you're definitely gonna have a better spray pattern and experience with your Plasti Dip. So that's the beginning tips, and once this is warmed up, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna spray a couple pieces. All right, we are outside and we are preparing to set up our work area. It's pretty simple. Uh, I just have a piece of cardboard that I've used a million times that I'm going to use to protect my floor because this stuff will stick to just about anything. If you actually look close, over here on the floor of my dirty garage, you can see lots of this green color. That is Plasti Dip. So, before you can start spraying, you have to make sure a couple things are done. Your work area is protected and that your pieces are done. That means all your final detail work is done and you can't do anything beyond what, you, what you've got. If you still need to stand a little bit, make sure that's done. If you've got little fuzzies hanging off the end, make sure that's done first. Anything you need to do needs to be done before this step. Once you Plasti Dip, there's no sanding, things like that. You can go over and add more material on top of it, but you're gonna have to Plasti Dip it all over again. And since it's not cheap, I don't recommend doing that. So take the time to go over your piece one last time. Ensure all the pieces are as smooth as you want, and etc., and you'll be ready to go. This is the front part of a belt I'm creating. It'll go like that for a World of Warcraft armor build. It's got the lion's head mold. It's not beautiful, but it'll work. And I've got the side pieces as well, <coughs> which will, excuse me, <coughs> will wrap around with the belt. So these are all prepared and ready to be painted. They're already heat formed. So the Plasti Dip will kind of help a little bit hold it in the shape that it's currently in. That's another advantage to having Plasti Dip. But it makes it a little bit more difficult to paint. So you have to do, really figure out how you're going to paint it first. If you need to put it on something or if you're just going to paint it as is. I think these will work if I just set them like this. Give them the McDonald's Golden Arches. And now my plastic dip is all ready to go, and we're gonna go get it and start painting. All right, we give it one last shake. 
And one thing I wanted to mention about Plasti Dip is since this is such a toxic product in stores a lot of times, managers of all these stores will remove the caps and they'll keep them behind the counter. So always take off the lid, make sure there's a cap. I've found many times where I've come home, there's no cap. So you wanna make sure that you have a cap before you leave. I'm just going to spray it out into the air a little bit just to make sure it's working. Okay, looks like it's gonna flow well. I am outside, well ventilated area. You want your first coat to be a wet coat, but not overly thick. And you have to keep in mind that there's angles here. There's crevices. You have to make sure you hit this from several different angles. <clears throat> Shake as you go as well. And as you can see, I'm not really concerned about the underside of this because the underside is going to be on my belt itself. So I'm not concerned about it. But you do have to make sure you're getting edges. And one of the good things about Plasti Dip is since I'm making a layer to go over top of this, this latex piece that's on top of here, this will help hold it in place even better, make it a little bit more sturdy. Now again, you wanna make sure you're getting this from all the angles, but you don't wanna oversaturate it that you get a big drip in it. If you get a run in it, uh, it's very difficult to get off. Since this is not sanding friendly, there's not much you could do with it. And my last tip for using Plasti Dip is when you're done, turn it upside down. Do that until it runs clear. That'll clean out everything from your nozzle, because if you don't, that will gunk up and you won't get many more uses out of that lid. And we're just gonna give it a few minutes to dry, about 15 minutes to dry, and we're gonna add a second layer, and we're done. Thank you so much for watching, but before you run off to craft your own awesome cosplay armor and props, do me a favor and click that subscribe button down below so you'll always be updated when new videos are released. Also, if you need more tips and tricks and tutorials, you can stop by www.ccosplay.com for much more information and articles that are released on a regular schedule. And last but not least, stay crafty.